I love I'm back again and I forgot how I water over here but I figured you know what since I'm here I have nothing to do at the moment we're going to do the second video I was requested to do so I want to thank you I'm going to put your name forgive me please Amen I'm in AYM4N I apologize please forgive me but um yeah, so we're doing the cruel world of getting all 202 Platinum Relics in Crash Bandicoot, which hurts. It hurts. It, uh, it hurts a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> that does hurt. But, um, yeah, I'm going through my nostalgic phase. My, uh, me reminiscing about playing Crash many, many, many years ago many years ago i don't even think i've gotten all 202 huh anywho i don't think i've gotten all of this stuff anyways i don't no no pretty sure i never 100 percent crashed first or second game that was my brother's cup of tea not mine i just wanted to beat the game <laughs> well Vix, how do you beat the game without a 100 percent it eh, do you Give the controller to your brother and let him do the hard part and then take it back. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> back then. <laughs> uh, I should probably get back on Crash though. But yeah, let's um, let's go ahead and... Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get this situated. Let me find my life. I wasn't ready. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, let's put a pause on the music. Oh. Let's make sure I have um computer please, please work with me. There we go. Alright, and in three, two, I'm taking my sweet time. One. Haha. -ha. Wait. I will get this situated, I promise. There we go. Bam. And so I said to the vicar, I'm not a man, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know what? I'm really starting to like you now, Bricks. Okay, this makes a lot more sense why he married the Bricks in the first place. Got it. I'm not doing these in order anyway, or either, but we got it. I don't think I ever want to leave lockdown. That's good because you can't. Oh, hello. Welcome to my show. I'm Caddy. And when Hi, I'm Caddy. not busy committing treason in America, you'll most likely find me playing Crash Bandicoot games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all I ever do with my life. I'm either playing Crash or being an American traitor. I'm sure by this point, a lot of you know my deep, uncomfortable love for the marsupial. I mean, last year, I even did a video making a tier list rating all of his butts from every game he's been in. Terrible suit! <laughs> but for anybody new here, well... Hi. On my channel Hi. in 2018, I decided to label every June of every year as Bandicoot Months, where my channel briefly goes on a Crash deviation to celebrate everything and anything to do with Crash. Including his buttocks. Creases. <laughs> you see, if it weren't for Crash, I probably wouldn't be here making videos. Crash 3 Warped was the first game I ever played. It was the introduction into the games industry for me. And since then, I've followed Crash through thick and thin. Hence, <laughs> I wanted to dedicate a whole month to talk about him. Okay, that video was late. So yeah, even though the world has still turned into bricks outside, that's not going to stop this train. So welcome, lumpies and germs. Choo -choo. Bandicoot month 2020. <laughs> I am only three years late. Why is it in June though? Pretty simple really. I was born in June 1994 and Crash 3 was the first video game I ever played. Oh, you youngin. And then the Insane Trilogy came out in June 2017, followed by Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled coming out in June 2019. Basically, the stars all align when it comes to the month of June, me and Crash Bandicoot. I'm Okay, that's me with Sonic. There's uh, quite a few games that came out. No, but okay, I'm digressing. Also, very Sorry. Also, that Bandicoot Month is not a very original name, but it's a lot better than Jundicoot. And God help us, we don't even talk about Bandicoot. But with such a glowing appreciation for the orange rat, so too comes a desire to... Um. 
perfect his games. And yes, I have indeed broken all the boxes and found all of the gems in all of the games multiple times over and ticked over the completion percentage to a million percent more times than I've turned a box of sharing nuggets into a box of these are all mine nuggets. But throughout my countless replays of Crash's games, there's one thing I've neglected to touch for years and years. Mm -hmm. Until now. A few years ago, I uploaded this video to my channel. Crash 1. I did it. Crash 2. I did it. Crash 3. I did it. Yep, I got every single Platinum Time Trial Relic in the classic Crash trilogy about a year and a half ago. Back then, I was really proud of myself. But that pride came at the cost of my own sanity. And so, since I guess I never recovered, I thought I'd take it one step further and make a video talking about what I went through when I woke up one day and decided that all the Platinum Relics in the original trilogy mm -hmm. wasn't enough. Welcome, everybody, to the time that I got. The but first, you may not even know what I'm talking about, so here's some history. Crash Bandicoot 3 introduced us to the concept of permanent power-ups for Crash, obtainable after beating each boss level. And they allowed you to revisit stages you missed collectibles in and use those new power-ups to reach them. It also gave you more unique ways to get through the levels in general and made some of the later stages more difficult to test your knowledge of these new abilities. At the end of the game, though, you get all the crystals and fight to the death against the evil Ned Cortex, who falls down a big hole while dropping behind the final power-up a new pair of Nikes. At face value, hey. these seemed very unhelpful and pointless. I mean, I've already got some Adidas at home. Especially when compared to a double jump or fruit bazooka, these seemed unnecessary and a bit of an anticlimactic reward for beating the game. But then, you go back into the earlier stages to grab the final collectibles you missed, and at the very start of the level, you see a weird-looking thing that looks like a rotting lemon. Curious, you touch it, and then... Whoa, what's this? Who blew that whistle? Why did the Wumpa Fruit fly away? Why is there a timer? Does that mean I have to run? I I'm gonna run, you know? I'm gonna run. Come on, Crash, dash away! Dash your little bandit cock off! This is why the Crash Dash is a power-up, the time trials, and you are tasked with replaying every level as fast as humanly possible in mm -hmm. order to get the best time. The boxes mm -hmm. you usually break for the clear gem get replaced with time crates that halt the clock for the amount of seconds displayed on them, or they turn into empty boxes that do nothing but get in your effing way. For God's sake, who is leaving these boxes in the middle of Agrabah? After which, beating the best times of each level rewards you with one of three types of relic, a new collectible. The Sapphire Relic might as well be a participation certificate worthy of a single clap. <laughs> well done. You tried. They are the easiest to get by far and barely mm -hmm. require much rushing at all to obtain them, so I suppose they're there to pat your children on the back. Yeah. Yeah. After this are the golden relics, a bit harder to get than sapphire, but they are the bare minimum you need to grab in order to bump up your final completion percentage in order to get the final hidden gem from Coco and complete the game. But then, oh, but then mm -hmm. there are the platinum time That's trials. My ass, These are another beast entirely and the subject of today's video. To get the platinum relics, it requires you to know the stage inside out, not just the best routes to take for shortcuts across the terrain, but the best way to get around enemies, to exploit certain options obstacle timings, to use all your power-ups, to pick up Aku Aku hit point masks and sacrifice them at the right moments while keeping him for other moments so that you can go invincible after you get three of him. It's more or less speed running as a standard gameplay mechanic. Oh, what's that, kids? You can't play that well? Tough shit! Go away! This orange kite wasn't good enough for you anyway. Than it. After Crash 3, the time trial relics became a bit of a staple in most of the Crash games following afterwards, including Crash Team Racing. And hell, when the Insane Trilogy came out, they even added time trial relics into Crash 1 and Crash 2, which originally didn't have them. But to this day, Crash fans remain divided about them. I mean, were they a cheap form of padding that were there to needlessly stretch out the games in a series that was losing ideas by game number three? Or was this brand new content worthy of your time to go through oh my and gosh, added more depth, replayability and complexity to the future games that included them? Personally, I'm of the latter half of this opinion. The time trial relics to me add even more depth to replaying the same stage as you already finished because you aren't just going through it normally or combing your way through it slowly slowly with new power-ups to find collectibles, you're doing it all in a completely different way. It's almost like you're playing a totally different stage. Not to mention, the relics themselves aren't just a random optional collectible to flash your e-peen around to nobody because you're alone in your house. They contribute to game completion, not just for grabbing the final hidden gems, but also for unlocking access to secret levels that are only unlocked by grabbing a certain number of relics. Whether it's a secret platform that takes you to a secret warp room full of extra levels, or a new race that you have to beat to get the secret ending, the relics don't only provide a new 
new level of difficulty to levels that you may have found too easy, but also give you access to more content, which in my opinion is a better way to unlock them instead of just having more levels with more gems to grab. It's something different, you know, and requires a different approach and skill level to grab them, while staying true to the classic Crash formula. But the Platinum Relics don't give you shit! Aside from your own sadistic satisfaction, the Platinum Relics do nothing for you. At all. The Gold Ones are all that you need for completion, and for the extra level unlocks, you only need the bare minimum Sapphire Relics, so why go for the Platinum? Because I'm incomplete. <laughs> 10 out of 4. I love it. The title of this video isn't lying. Over the last few days, I have spent hours on top of hours in some vain, pointless attempt to grab every single Platinum Time Trial Relic in every Crash game that has them. Every single one. This is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in any game I've ever played. Full stop. You guys think that playing the Insane Trilogy regularly is the Dark Souls of platforming games? You don't know anything until you've seen what I've seen. And shut up! And stick it in your... Chin. And just so I can get the entire Ow. internet off of my back before I'm called a filthy liar, this is my save file for Crash 1 Insane, and here are all 27 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Crash 2 Insane, and here are all 27 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Crash 3, and here are all 31 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Crash Team Racing, and here are all 18 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Wrath of Cortex, and here are all 30 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Crash Nitro Car, and here are all 13 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for the huge adventure, and here are all 20 Platinum Relics. Here is my save file for Entrance, and here are all 24 Platinum Relics. And for Crash Nitro Car GBA, for some reason, doesn't have a tally anywhere, but trust me, here are 3, 6, 9, 12 out of 12 Platinum Relics. Of this, course, trust me, totals up to 202 Platinum Relics. 202 literal perfect run-throughs of stages as fast as possible while hitting every time-stopping crate, avoiding enemies and getting stuck in doors. <laughs> and I do not, I repeat, do not recommend you doing this unless you have nothing better to do or have a YouTube show where you can show off to strangers. For me, this surpassed the definition of painful. In fact, at many points, I could swear that my thumbs were going to fall off. Oh. It will take you so long to grab every Platinum mm -hmm. Time Trial Relic in the Crash series that you'll become a relic by the time you're done with it. This was me before I started making this video, and this was me after I finished it. Are you feeling okay? Don't even talk to me. And aside from talking to you all about my experience going through with this, I've got absolutely nothing to show for it. So I made myself a bad. But I mean, there's only so many different ways I can say over and over again, get into plats is diffy. So I won't go on about it in a general sense anymore. Instead, I thought it would be fun to go through miniature top fives in no particular rating order for the hardest platinum time trial relics to get in each and every game that has them. Not counting Crash Bash, by the way, because those relics aren't from doing any time trials, they don't use time crates, they take far too long to unlock, and because Crash Bash makes me want to die. They also didn't bother giving time trial relics to Crash Tag Team Racing, which I I really don't understand since it's already a racing game, but there is actually one hidden relic in the game that not many people know about. All you gotta do is play the game for 10 minutes, get bored of it, put it back on the shelf and leave it there for the rest of your life. After this, it eventually becomes a relic itself. It's also worth mentioning that for this video I'll be using the remake versions of Crash Team Racing and Crash 3 because they're more or less exactly the same thing as the originals and just look nicer. Plus in some cases they're even harder so I wanted to challenge myself a little bit. <laughs> and I'll only be covering the relics that you can get in the campaign modes of each game and that can be added to your total platinum relic tally which means that the brand new added levels to the insane trilogy do count since they get added to your campaign total but all of the new tracks in nitro fueled don't count because getting the relics there doesn't count towards anything doesn't get displayed anywhere and i have no clue when they'll stop adding dlc levels so it's probably best that i stick with the story mode ones that never changed from ps1 to ps4 also there's no point doing the nitro kart remade tracks in nitro fueled because i did them on the original game already and with that in no particular order let's start off with the hardest platinum relics I had to get from Crash 1. This game was pretty damn hard to platinum all the way through. When it comes to Crash 1, whether it's the original or the remake on the Insane Trilogy, there's one thing that rings true about the entire game. 
it isn't supposed to be rushed. It's full play Bandicoot. Because of that, when Vicarious Visions added relics to the original Crash for the remake, just because they could, they didn't even bother to add the Crash Dash as a power up because I mean, the, the game is simply not built for it. However, this doesn't mean that the Platinum Relics still aren't an utter prick to grab because with the game's platforming itself being built around patience, that doesn't translate to running through the stages as fast as humanly possible. <laughs> As such, one of the hardest Platinums I tried to get in this game was with Sunset Vista. From the very second you start, you need to get the first jump correct or else... And it only yeah. gets worse from there. In terms of raw platforming and nothing else, this stage in a normal setting isn't too taxing. But where the challenge comes from is by rushing through it. You'll find yourself needing to defy common sense and physics by jumping after being pushed away by protruding walls. You need to make sure that you time the start of your run perfectly so that you aren't stuck behind timed flaming torches. You need to make sure that you don't get hit at all so that you can invincible Aku Aku your way across the middle part of the level. Really important because it makes you run way faster and be invulnerable to anything. You can't even afford to wait on these spinning platforms because that wastes too much time so you better make sure the position they're in on your current run will be just right for you to hop skip and jump across them otherwise you'll hop skip and suffocate and these bats sweet mother crap head these bats sometimes you can spin them all away no issue and sometimes you can't no idea why but it's enough to make a hernia pop out and all of this wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't one of the longest damn levels of the game it's not only a flawless run you need to commit to but it has to be a marathon too luckily though I've got so good at this stage by this point I'm able to smash these completely useless boxes right here before the exit and still end up with the platinum. I'm being way too cocky to talk about the first hardest level in this video. <laughs> Generator Room begins with Cortex laughing so heavily at you that he's practically choking, and if you're going for the Platinum here, he has every right to giggle at you. The first two time crates are positioned underneath TNT crates that you have to avoid spinning, and if you can get your head around that for the first goddamn boxes that need breaking, you'll then find yourself in a level with picky pixel perfect jumps galore, multiple moving platforms over bottomless pits, and in possibly the hardest aspect of the stage, the requirement to skip as much of these moving platform sequences as possible by jumping as as early as possible on and off of them as early as possible in order to shave off the milliseconds you need in order to win while fighting with depth perception away from the screen. Why do I feel the need to do this? Because the end of the stage sees you moving on floating platforms that are so slow I'm convinced they're clinically depressed and because of how much time this segment of the run wastes you need to optimize the entire level beforehand so that you're safe enough to then skip the final jump and make it safely to the end. And that isn't what I like to do in my generator rooms. <laughs> Fumbling in the dumbling is a pretty hard stage just to get through normally, the gimmick being that you are in the dark and need to smash Aku Aku crates in order to keep the path lit. But If you get hit just one single time, you don't just lose the hit point, you lose all the light as well. It doesn't matter how many Aku Aku crates you break, you are stuck in the dark. Combine that with the need to rush through this level, often making leaps of faith onto platforms that haven't come out of the dark yet, jumping onto spiders to make extremely tricky jumps, and trying to speed past swinging axes that sometimes come out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and you end up with a platinum relic that I'm convinced has a sad face. <laughs> the lab. Oh Lord Jesus, strangle a cat, the lab. One of the hardest levels in the base game as it stands, trying to rush through this one is like trying to square dance on top of a kettle. It's horrible. And the main issue here is the fact that you are pretty much required to run by everything in one go without stopping. But only when being able to start the level off at such a perfect time where you won't need to wait for these electric gates that if they touch you will zap your bat. And even if you time that start off so well that all the gates turn off by the time you reach them, meaning that you can get past them without stopping, that doesn't negate the trapdoors that open and close very quickly, yeah. the switches that you must hit in order to open doors otherwise bye bye. the fact that you can't see behind the doors in order to plan your next move until it's too late, and the awkward jumps that you need to do around all the enemies which if you time wrong can also lead to you getting electrocuted. Although if you end up being in the stage so long that you could have kids with it, you could teach yourself to jump over the lower zaps of the electric gates at the right time. <laughs> Stormy Ascent. Come on, you all knew this was going to be here. The level that was supposed to be in the original PS1 game that was taken out because it was too hard. Yeah, pretty obvious choice now that I've said that, eh? I'm sure many of you would argue that Road to Nowhere or the High Road should have been one of the harder levels, but to be honest, I found them not that bad at all, because all you need to do is move forward and time your own jumps, and that is it, really. Not move along, time jumps, land on platforms that move faster than a bullet train, optimize your party so you can get to vanishing platforms at the right time to keep running, avoid enemies everywhere, get over spikes protected by stairs that turn into slides, jump off of spinning platforms to bounce on top of time crates and then land back on the spinning platforms, land on other platforms moving around in weird wavy patterns over spikes 
and bottomless pits, and mm -hmm. while trying to keep yourself alive for nearly three minutes in one of the longest stages in the entire game. Yeah, and you guys think a bridge is difficult. Oh look! What's that hiding under the stairs? Why, it's Kashmanuka 2 Gringotts Steakhouse! This game was just as hard to grab the Platinums on as Crash 1, but for different reasons. As we all know by now, the original Crash 2 changed and refined basically everything from Crash 1, from the save system, to gem collecting, and especially the controls, including introducing the use of a slide, crawl, and slide jump for extra height and distance to your jumps. However, there were still no relics or power-ups in the PS1 games, so the Endsane Trilogy remake got the same treatment as Crash 1, but with one key difference. You could now use the Crash Dash from Crash 3. And if you think that being able to run faster makes getting the Platinum Relics any easier... It does oh, not. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I laugh like a dad. The thing is, just like with Crash 1, because Crash 2 was never designed from the ground up to give players the ability to dash through them, the levels themselves are also not quite built to be rushed either. It's not as bad as the original by a long way, but it's still very noticeable that you're dashing through the snow in a one horse open coffin. So in many ways, despite the new moves you can play with that allow you to take ridiculous shortcuts, some of the platinum relics here can actually be harder to get than any of the other games because of the Crash Dash power-up added in that the original design of the levels never accounted for. For. But I still persisted, and here's what I thought were the hardest ones to get. Let's start things off tame with a little trip to a simple stage known as Crash Crush. Well, it's simple enough on the base game at least. You run away from a boulder, but you can't run away from yourself. When going for a Platinum Relic though, Jesus H. Crisps. Where in the standard game you get just enough room to see what's coming ahead with the screen placement, with the Crash Dash, that fairness is thrown out of the window. You cannot see what's coming or react to it quick enough because of how fast you move. And if it isn't a bottomless pit or electric gate you need to get around, it's the one thing that will absolutely kill your Platinum run time the mines. You hit these mines and don't die, but fly into the air and stop when you hit the floor for a second. This means you can't hit a single one of these things or else you won't make it to the end in time. And because in the game the mines don't hurt you, they put dozens of them in the stage to avoid. If you're playing normally, they aren't a problem at all, just an annoyance that allows you to make a few mistakes. But running at blistering speeds, unable to see or guess where they'll appear from, or jump over them without seeing a pit they're sitting right next to, is infuriating. <laughs> This level has no business being this difficult to platinum, but it is, so I'm gonna bitch. Hits right next to enemies that are invulnerable in certain states, ice physics, rolling wheels of hate, awkward box placement, ice physics, wooden log traps that crush you instantly if you haven't optimized your run before that point, ice physics, ice physics, icicles that hurt you if you aren't running perfectly fast by them, which isn't always guaranteed because of Long John Seal over here. Oh, and did I mention that this level has ice physics? Oh, and yeah. how about this for taking the biscuit? At the start of the stage, you have these weird looking platforms here that will take you up to the side scrolling parts of the levels, and in the insane trilogy, if you land anywhere other than dead center on to these platforms, you waste time as Crash automatically hops to the middle before the platform even starts moving. So you That's need to like make sure on every run that you land dead center into this platform so it moves instantly. Why? You know how in showbiz everybody says to each other, break a leg? Do you reckon in snowbiz they all say to each other, keel over and die? <laughs> Hanging out, unlike its namesake, isn't very relaxing and doesn't lead to anything sexy. You begin having to deal with a windy sewage tunnel that the camera isn't fast enough to catch up with you on, meaning that you can't really see the rolling barrels of acid or the robots barreling towards you like they just saw the ice cream van. That isn't the worst of it though, because this level requires rushing as fast as possible during these monkey bar segments, which are unbearably awkward when you realize that in order to get the platinum, you cannot stop once during these moments. See this? Yep, even if you stop for that long, you're screwed. So the very second you jump onto those metal grades, your positioning and timing needs to be absolute during the monkey swinging and before you reach the monkey swinging. So if you have a pinpoint perfect run in the platforming moments, but started the level at the incorrect millisecond, by the time you reach these bars, the timing of these robots is out of whack and you won't be able to rush by without stopping or dying. Which, by the way, if you want the relic, you can't do. And there's no Aku Aku Mars to sacrifice for this, until this part, where I then used it on the nitro crates, making me unable to rush by the electrified water, meaning I wasted too much time and didn't get the platinum. Damn, this was a hard one. <laughs> Ruination makes this mini list, not because of the tricky platforming, the enemies, or the explosive crates, because truth be told, they aren't too difficult to get around with the incredibly blocky and straight level design. It makes it on this list for two reasons only. One, the timing of getting around the flaming tiki heads without stopping and waiting. God 
damn, it's so precise. They must have eaten a barbecue for lunch. And two, very annoyingly, these singular three platforms right here near the mm. end of the stage. Trying to jump from each of these with slippery physics, multiple directions they move towards and away from the screen, and moving while they're off screen so that you have no idea where to position your next jump until it's too late, sucked all the fun out of running this stage. <laughs> you could have had the most flawless run and avoided all of the bastarding tiki head flames from pure luck, you know, but three. just because you failed this bit near the ending, you've got to start the whole stage again. I don't think I need to explain why Totally Bear is on this list because, well, look at it. But in case you can't see, let me spell it out. You can't see. But that isn't the only problem. If you want to play this totally normally, Totally Bear is a fine level, not too challenging. But the Platinum Relic requires you to use a dash ability as much as possible. The dash lasts for about a second and then takes another second or so to cool down before you can use it again. And not only is the level pitch black, meaning you can't see what you're dashing into, but most of the level is filled with jumps that can only be cleared by performing a dash jump. So you need to decide in the middle of the dark if you're going to dash right now and then not have a dash ready for a jump that needs it, or don't dash right now and end up wasting too much time while you save the dashing only for the jumps that need it. Look, you're riding a baby polar bear towards a husk of nothing. I shouldn't need to explain why this is hard. I'm not in court. This then moves us on to Crash 3, the <laughs> game that introduced the time trial relics in the first place and gave us the crash dash for the first time. So logically, you'd think that because the game was built with the Crash Dash in mind, everything from this point onwards would be much easier. And I never played the other ones. I've only played one and two, that three or the other ones, and that was all my brother. All. Wishful thinking! To be fair though, in terms of difficulty, I'd say this was one of the easier ones to fully platinum, purely because it was designed to be rushed to a certain extent. It's still not easy, god no, but compared to the others, it's not as bad. And by the way, again, yes, I am using the Insane Trilogy version of the game for the sake of consistency in this video. And if anything, because of some of the physics and vehicle control changes in this version, this is arguably the hardest way to get all the platinum relics anyway, so you're welcome internet. Oh great, what's that?! It's my ego. Ah! Anyway, I think it's high time we get this list started. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Let's go. Damn you. <laughs> Fireman. Fireman. High time sees you traveling through the world of Arabian Nights as you hop along magic carpets that won't stay still to screw up your jumps and you'll run straight into the jaws of fire caused by the locals throwing all of their rubbish out of the windows. I guess this means they drink petroleum. These two elements are enough to mess up the most perfect of runs, and the irritating thing is that they occupy most of the stage and are both built around a looping AI that no matter how hard you try will never be exactly the same on each attempt, causing you to miss countless jumps. Or you can just fall through the platforms entirely, because who needs platforms in a platformer? And if you haven't got an Aku Aku mask to sacrifice for the fire pits, that means you are stuck waiting, which means that you need to put your controller down and start drinking battery acid. Ah! Hog Ride is a horrid level to perfect for a Platinum Relic. Luckily, I've done it so many times now, it isn't too taxing for me, but just getting to that point made me want to shave with a cactus. The level of practice you need to perform the utter absurd stipulation of getting a Platinum on this stage is a joke. But not a funny joke, a joke that I hate so much that I have to write a letter of complaint to the BBC. What you need to do in Hog Ride to get a Platinum Relic is start boosting on the first speed pad you see, and then that's it, good luck. For the entire stage, you cannot lose this boost. And while you're boosting, your turning is so slow and heavy, even my knees think, damn, I wish I was as stiff as that. <laughs> If the road were empty, it would be fine, but it oh, isn't. Yeah. There are other races looking to nudge into you and ruin the boost, ramps that if you go over will ruin your boost, and mm. police cars that peacefully sit there and do nothing, which, let's be honest, is not realistic at all. The time crates as well, they all need to be broken to get the relic, but they're positioned in places where you need to preemptively turn into them and then preemptively turn out of them to slip through the gaps that are just about as wide as your bike. And by the way, the edge of the road also ruins your boost, so Hog Ride, in essence, is a tightrope walk on a motorbike. Yeah, it doesn't even matter if you wait behind the starting line for ages for all of the other races to leave the track. You still have to deal with some of the tightest, flawless driving you'll ever experience in any game. And yes, all of the future bike levels are a piece of cake compared to this one, because they have moments where keeping your boost going is impossible, and time crates that are in the air that you have to ramp jump over, which will ruin your boost. So you have no choice but to slow down, but can still get the platinum. Here though, nah, you've got to keep the boost going for the entire thing. And it's also harder on the Insane Trilogy than on the original game because of the control differences. 
horses. Hog ride? At this point, I'd prefer riding a hog. And I think Crash wants to ride one in another way. <laughs> Sphinxinator. What a boneheaded troll of a stage this is to Platinum. I mean, it starts with you needing to ignore the clock, head backwards, fire at the clock with your bazooka from a distance, and then hit the crates that were originally behind you because now they've become time stoppers. After that, it's just you and the whim of the stage, subjecting you to whatever it feels like at whatever time it feels like. Sure, there are some skill-based elements you can master to cut down the seconds, like death tornado spin gliding across these moving platforms to skip them, or working out how to get by this awkward stack of TNT crates sandwiched between time crates. Particularly annoying since you can't tank through here and need to save Aku Aku for the final invincibility stretch at the end of the level. But the rest of it, so Beck help me, where do I begin? <laughs> Fast moving platforms that leave too big of a gap to skip quickly unless they're timed perfectly, closing doors that stay shut for ages unless you time your run through perfectly, flamethrower men whose left and right pattern changes by the millisecond depending on how well your run has gone up to that point, ice physics across oily floors that also have giant block traps falling from the ceiling. Most of the platinum relic here is just luck. So, good luck. <laughs> Luckily, our next level doesn't rely on luck. But that doesn't make it good. Hot Coco is the most unique level in the entire series for one reason. It's non-linear. You have to <laughs> search for a nitro detonator box hidden in the level in order to clear the row of nitro crates blocking the exit, and Aku Aku isn't a thing that can cheese it for you. So you need to find the best possible route of hitting enough time crates on your way to the detonator and on your way back to end the level. You can't hit too many on the way there, or you'll have none on the way back. There's like 70 boxes that you can choose from and multiple directions and angles you can take. There's a lot to consider when picking the most optimal route for you. And this wouldn't be so bad if the jet ski controls weren't as bad as my self-esteem. I've been over this before, but it bears repeating and grinding into dust. The jet ski controls are the worst part of the Insane Trilogy as a whole. And where they far from affect my love for the game as it stands, when trying to get the Platinum Relic for Hot Coco, it's borderline unplayable. You skim and slide over the water with the most slippery controls imaginable and with a stupidly wide turning circle. So when your route involves being up close and personal with multiple mines, or nitro crates, by the end of your run, you would have learnt a brand new language full of naughty words and phlegm. The time limit is so tight too, so you end up experimenting with different routes which means different timings of different moving minds and different angles across different ramps and it's so easy to miss every box or to hit the ones you really didn't want to hit. Hell, I could barely hit the time trial clock half the time before even starting the stage. Look at this. The best time I could get legitimately was right here, only overtaken by the glitch run I did ages ago where you could do this. And trust me, after only a few tries of hot cocoa, you will be tempted to do this. But if you want to see the route that I figured out legit, try copying it for yourself. It's right here. Not that it will save you from the controls though, but it's something, right? <laughs> Future Tense, the new level added into the Insane Trilogy made entirely from the ground up by Vicarious Visions. It's designed to be the hardest level in Crash 3, and it is the hardest level in Crash 3, which naturally makes it the hardest to speedrun. Future Tense is so difficult that it makes me want to run away and put up a load of future tense. It's got everything. Time crates hidden in death-defying places, moving platforms, spinning platforms, plasma gates that time themselves on and off, enemies that are briefly invulnerable and move in weird patterns, enemies that are briefly invulnerable and don't move in weird patterns, multiple missiles coming at you from the foreground off-screen, the need for you to not get hit at all so you can exploit Aku Aku invincibility halfway through the stage, platforms that become unusable at inconvenient Hello. times. This level has it all. It takes every single frustrating aspect of Platinum Relic running from every other classic crash level and blends it together into a milkshake only good enough for an oh. OAP. Just look at this. Look at this. They expect you to rush through this. I think it's about time that we move on to Crash Team Racing now. And yes, just before you say anything, I will be using footage from the remake just for consistency in this video and because it looks nicer. Oh, also, it's the same designed tracks and it's got the same time crates. It, it's the same game, just it looks nicer and controls a little bit differently. Plus, with the insane speeds you can reach in this version, I think some of the relics are harder to get on PS4 anyway, because it's way too easy to totally overshoot jumps and fly over the boxes. I made getting the relics harder for myself, again. Yeah, I know. No need to bow down, it's fine. I've got kids here that already do that for me. This game, personally, I ended up finding one of the easiest to platinum, which I really wasn't expecting. Still not easy, far from it, but much easier than the other games by quite a long way. When Crash Team Racing originally rolled around, I don't think anybody expected them to bring the platforming collectathon elements of classic Crash over to the kart racing mechanics, but they damn well did. Not for the regular races, but for the extra challenge races you unlocked after earning the main game trophies. One of those challenges of which being the time trials, rewarding you with the same time trial relics as the previous games. The objective here is the same, rush through the track as fast 
fast as possible, but with three very important differences. Firstly, you don't unlock a new speed turbo power-up or anything, you just need to perfect the mechanic of drift boosting and use it as much as possible. Which is kind of a pain when you need to aim accurately at the time crates while you're doing it. Secondly, time crates are everywhere, so many to the point meaning that you'll have to ignore some crates and save them for different routes on future laps. And thirdly, hitting all of the crates rewards you with a 10 second deduction, which is a massive bonus, and a brilliant reward for bringing in the smashing all boxes mechanic from the original games. With all of that being said though, there were a few tracks here I platinumed by complete accident, which was a good sign. There were one or two stages where I was able to miss a box, reverse to hit the box, and still win the platinum. And okay. some tracks like Cortex Castle or Oxide Station were so fun to speed through, I ended up earning the platinums without even hitting every time crate, missing the 10 second deduction I figured that I would have needed. But that doesn't mean there aren't some bollock ripping tracks though, because here they are. First off, Coco Park. Oh. You left. Coco Park is without a doubt the easiest track in Crash Team Racing. It's big, wide, and has no sharp turns at all. But going for that Platinum Relic for me proved to be quite the tickler, all because of one fatal flaw. The final hill of the course. The amount of times you will try and fail to fly off the edge of this hill to grab these boxes to the left is unfathomable. I've tried multiple speeds from multiple angles, and it still seems like total luck to me. And this single Sekiro level jump hiding in the easiest course of the game is an awe. There's also time crates hidden behind the same hill on the ground that you will never be able to see or aim towards before jumping off of the hill that you will need to do to get the boost. You will drive by these things at least once even if you have a rough idea where they'll be and on an easy track missing these really few boxes makes you feel like a complete that idiot. And I'm not colorful. an idiot because my mummy told me I wasn't. <laughs> Engines Lab. This is an awkward ass track to race in while trying to boost constantly and hit all the time crates, mostly due to the endless 90 degree turns and crates hidden behind other corners that you can't quite see around until it's too late. Also, at the end of the lap, you get given a ton of three second crates all stacked up in a grid. And I, for the life of me, cannot figure out the best strategy to smash them all efficiently without wasting time within the first two laps. I wasn't able to get the Platinum even by starting the race reversing into them. However you look at it, it's unintuitive and it feels like a pointless hurdle that you can very easily mess up, costing you the Platinum Relic. I also really hate the way the PlayStation logo sticker throbs whenever you speed boost. It's very distracting and it made me fall off this end of the track at least six times. By the way, that's another thing. This track puts too many boxes right on the edge of bottomless pits that you cannot fall in, but still somehow you have to speed pass. What is this? Blizzard Bluff is only hard to platinum for one reason, and anybody who's played this stage knows what I'm about to say. Two words. This f***ing jump. Oh wait, that's three. This is it. This is the only reason this stage is such a chore to get the Platinum Relic on. I mean, I suppose the ice physics can be kind of annoying, but those issues pale. They squeal in comparison to this oh. bumbling piss stick of a jump right here. You not only have to be going as fast as humanly possible beforehand, which means not getting squashed by this stupid stone, but you also have to be boosting while controlling yourself on ice physics so that you don't crash, while hitting all of the time craze placed in such a way that I swear it was designed to point a laugh at me even when I got the jump correct i'm playing as gorilla monkey anus face for this one Ooh. papu papu is many things he's a belly he's a terrible boss fight he's a laughing stock papu want in action to lay boom down me. and he's a stereotype but he has his own racetrack in crash team racing one of my favorites in fact papu's pyramid but getting the platinum relic for it makes me want to snap my own neck while i'm screaming out loud <laughs> first of all you've got to go around the track as fast as possible which makes sense it is a time trial but if you go too fast you'll fly straight over the only chance you have to hit certain time boxes secondly you've got to perform a very awkward jump right off of the edge of the track in order to hit a clump of boxes going against common sense and with it being at a ridiculously weird angle that's very easy to mess up. Thirdly, this stage is guilty of the crime of placing some of these crates in the most dangerous and downright silly of places that are not only immensely difficult to hit while driving quickly, but even harder to hit without being instantly killed by the traps placed right next to them. Get out of my face and let me race before I fold you up and shove you into a green pipe, dick. You all saw this one coming, right? Sewer Speedway? I'd say this level is the hardest one to Platinum Relic by far, and it's on the first world of the adventure mode, so well done to whoever chose to put it there. The easy culprit alone for why this track is so difficult oh. is, of course, 
that horrible shortcut jump that you have to land at least once to grab a load of hidden time crates. But that's not actually what I dislike about this level, believe it or not. Check it, I can perform this jump nearly every single time I try it. Once you know you need to take the ramp before it, dead straight before you jump after performing a boost from the inside of another pipe, it's really not an issue. What I have an issue with is the ditch-like level design that doesn't work too well with the camera and hides time crates in its crevices so well that you will miss a good handful of the crates on your first few attempts. The camera in this track likes to screw you over more than anything else, actually. One of the first jumps hides a box on the ground after you land that you just have to get the position of as you land. There are crates hidden behind the corners of some of the edges of the sewer pipes, and there's even these three crates here that can't all be hit on the three laps because of the shortcut lap you need to take that avoids them. So hitting all of these alone is enough of a pain. I could also complain about the giant toxic barrels that roll back and forth just slowly enough that predicting what edge of the tunnel you need to be on is a pipe dream. <laughs> but more egregious to me is this box. This singular box right here. Looks very easy to get, doesn't it? Well, you won't get it. Approach it fast, you miss. Approach it slowly, you miss. Approach it straight, you miss. Approach it crooked, you miss. Approach it while jumping, you miss. Approach it while not jumping, you miss. To this day, I still have no idea how to hit this crate without the will of God, and whenever I do hit it successfully, that run is later ruined by the toxic barrels and other hidden boxes cowering in the curves of the half pipe that I can't quite see around. And then, after all of that, I had to platinum relic every level in Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. Mm -mm. So my day was going great. Wrath of Cortex is a very I'm polished sure that game that has no flaws whatsoever. You see these neon feather reflections? You see this falling down animation activating when being burned in lava? You see these floating eyes after a pitfall death? Yeah, all of that was clearly intentional. <laughs> If you were to class this game as Crash 4, which I suppose it is in Japan, then this is the official final Crash platformer with the exact same mechanics and gameplay structure as Crash 3. With that being said, getting the Platinums here was thoroughly unenjoyable, because the levels are either way too difficult, or way too easy and totally boring. There's no in-between with Wrath of Khan, and there were tons of levels that I could have picked for this mini list. I would say Smokey and the Bandicoot for the uncontrollably slippery Jeep controls, but the time limit for the Platinum is so generous you can basically rush through it while missing a ton of time. Time crates. I would say Crash Roids because of how quickly you can blow up. I would say Avalanche for that nightmare sequence of speed oh snowboarding gosh, down a hill, no. totally unable to see which time crates you need to hit. And I would say Banzai Bonsai for the much heavier platforming style of Coco, making things just a little bit harder than necessary. But all of these things didn't end up making the cut. So these levels I picked will go to show you how buggered they are for getting a platinum. Cortex! The Gauntlet. I mean, the level is named after exactly what it is. It's a gauntlet. A giant trial of seemingly endless obstacles, enemies, and death traps that will turn you bald. The timings of the obstacles are annoying time wasters when you approach them wrong. You need to keep as many Aku Aku masks on you as possible to survive some of the enemy attacks when you are unable to defend yourself. And there's no feeling quite like making it to the very last corner of the gauntlet, only to press yourself into a pancake! Cortex! Coral Canyon, a water level in a game where all of the water levels suck the life out of me. I majorly dislike the water levels in Wrath of Cortex or how overly spacious everything is, and yet despite that, how suddenly enemies and instant death traps can appear because they come from the other end of the screen that isn't even visible because the level is so huge. And that's the biggest problem here, trying to rush these levels with enemies appearing from thin air, thin water, while trying to figure out where the hell the time crates even are because you don't get enough of a view of the level on a single screen. Oh, did I also mention that most of this level takes place in a submarine that really needs to go on a diet? In this thing, you don't only move like a tank, but you are a huge huge target, can barely attack fast enough to react to the hundreds of enemies, and the metal casing gets completely obliterated if you so much as touch a goldfish. That, and here's a bugger, when you're out of the sub, did you know that the fast swim move you have, you know, to fast swim, doesn't get you the platinum relic by default? No, because you need to know to use the death tornado spin move. Yeah, underwater, which you can't do in any other crash game. So if this was the quickest way to move in the first place, why give us a fast swimming button? Why is steering during the spin like turning an oven dial? Why do we even need a sub if we're more safe and deadly being out in the open? If this is Coral Canyon, then where did the coral go? Cortex! Eskimo Roll's Platinum Relic is best described as being the same thing that Crash is rolling around in a massive lumpy ball. I think I'm one of the few people who will defend the ball rolling stages in Wrath of Cortex until I die. I think they're great fun, but when thrown into level design like this that you have no choice yeah. but to speed through, 
it all becomes wretched. This is easily the most perilous ball rolling stage in the game and is desperate at every opportunity for you to lose control of yourself and fly directly into a conveniently placed bandicoot rolling ball vehicle shaped hole, which ends up happening all the time. Not counting the times that you're trying to be careful and get sucked into the hole's irresistible grasp. Oh, and who's this? Why, it's Dingodile firing randomly in scattered patterns right where you need to be. And since you have to rush this stage, if he's firing at you as you roll by, you'll end up turning your nice solid ball into a hard boiled egg. Oh look, it's Tiny Tiger as well. What the hell are you gonna do to me after all the previous games? Oh god, don't nudge me. That's my one weakness. Cortex! Oh. Here we are attempting a platinum rush in Gold Rush, one of the longest damn stages in all of Crash 4 which in itself is already a problem if you fail on any one of the number of tricky platforming segments and the doomsday obstacles in your way because you've got a marathon of a stage to get back through in order to try again. It also has some very interesting physics, but the biggest flick in the nuts when it comes to Gold Rush are the utterly absurd <laughs> stipulations you must comply to in order to make the Platinum Relic work. You see these areas here? Taking into account that this happens to you if you fall from the monkey bars, do you think that means that this is the fastest way you have to get around them? No! In fact, the game expects you to figure out that you need to glitch by the out-of-bound areas with post-hit invincibility from Aku Aku in order to walk on areas usually impossible to reach so that you can skip the monkey bars. This is the only stage that allows you to do this with pits that could usually kill you even if you've got an invincible Aku Aku mask on. How dare you do that, Crash? Th this is a Christian channel! Cortex! For me, Droid Void was pure misery to try and Platinum Relic because it has everything I hate in a difficult time trial. A needless giant target vehicle type that is weaker than a flip-flop, a preposterous stage length, timed obstacles that will slow you down or kill you if you don't figure out how they work, long and horrifically boring paths that you find yourself redoing over and over again. Crash, how are you so slow on the monkey bars when your body is nothing but one giant peck? This monkey bar intro, though, is the cherry on top of the cake of life. Who decided this was an acceptable speed of movement, even for the regular game? It takes you nearly a minute at the start of every attempt just to get to the actual challenging parts of the platforming, by which time you die trying to learn it, and so then you're right back at the start again. And the tricky platforming is just one thing. This mech that Crash rides, where totally fine in the standard game, is hellish to use in a platinum run, mostly due to the Wumper Cannon never going off when you need it to for no reason whatsoever. You can't skip these parts, you need to blow the crates up, but I I rarely can. What is this? You hold the button to aim and let go of the button to fire. Why am I dropping the gun and not firing it, rash? Taking that aside though, like I mentioned, you're a huge target that's about as brittle as a champagne flute. Your jump from a standstill is painfully slow and you need an Aku Aku hit point to skip this enemy or the platinum isn't yours. I hated every waking second I spent in Droid Void. I'm sorry. Not as much as the time I spent in Crash Nitro Car. And may I just say that Crash Nitro Car is one of the most flawless games I've ever played. I have no doubt in my mind that this was one of the worst games to platinum every level on. At its release, Crash Nitro Kart was met with mixed reception, and I'll tell you straight away why that is. The controls feel like you just ran over a deer. Okay, it's not that bad, I'm exaggerating, it's fine, but it's not a satisfying <laughs> game to deer. race in when compared to CTR or even Mario Kart. There's no bounce, no sense of speed, strangely restrictive turning, and the new drift mechanic of giving you more speed, the closer you let the drift go before backfiring, is nice and all, but for all the platinums, you you had better make damn sure that all of your drift boosts are of the last minute perfect type, which are very easy to mess up or else you're not getting the platinum. Combined with difficult steering, even with the best steering character on your team, and you'll be missing boxes all the time, missing shortcuts with boxes in them all the time. So with all of this being said, most of the levels were maddeningly difficult for the exact same reasons. But what did I think about the hardest ones? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This level is called and it has multiple traps that move very quickly and can't touch you once, boxes placed over the edges of the bottomless pits that you have to steer away from the track to reach and then back onto the track again just in the right amount of time, there's an ending level squashing trap that you can activate yourself accidentally, and it's extremely long, making any mistake, especially on the last lap, extra annoying. But I didn't find it anywhere near as annoying as... Baron... Ruins. As a whole, the track and box placements within it aren't really the issue, it's standard stuff. What becomes a problem is the aforementioned control style having a right good steam in your face while you're trying to hit some of the trickier ones. Keeping mm -hmm. your speed up and steering correctly while avoiding these tiny bumps in the road is pretty aggravating. 
but the worst offender of bump placement in a kart racer of all time happens at the very end of this lap where you're required at max possible speed to jump from here, land at the correct spot and activate a successful string of perfect boosts while steering around this bump that can mess the entire pattern up while then performing a successful ramp jump from another bump to not only land into this shortcut but hit all the boxes contained within. If one of these things isn't done right, you aren't making this jump and the retries I have for it are staggering. I even tried cheating it, I got so frustrated, but that ended up wasting more time than saving it, so I suppose you can say now that my day has been barren ruined. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Deep sea driving is hard for one reason and one reason only. It isn't the shortcuts, it isn't the box locations, it isn't the slowing down mud sections, it's these fan blades. They're way too big, they're way too fast, there's way too many of them, you can't get touched by them once on all three laps, and I think they should deep sea die in a hole. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is a shock, isn't it? The final race course is one of the hardest to platinum. What? Well, it is, obviously. Hyperspaceway is a crazy track that has many shifts in course design during a single lap. It's got the most traps, it's got the most pitfalls, it's got the tightest turns, it's got the longest laps, making even the smallest mistake <laughs> make me feel sick at the thought of trying again, and it has without a doubt the hardest shortcut in the whole game to get right. This one requires constant boosting and absolute speed in order to clear the gap. And there's even mud on the track right before the biggest gap to slow you down even if you are boosting. Oh, but if you go too fast before reaching the shortcut that you need to go fast on, you could just hop your way over the boxes you need to break like a cute little bunny that I now want to hunt down and skin. Come on, come on, come on, come on. None of these tracks, though, compare even slightly to the mental damage that Jungle Boogie gave to me. This is one of the first <laughs> levels of the game, so how could it possibly be this bad? Oh, it the is. Bumps. My god, it is. In order to platinum Jungle Boogie, Boogie, you are required to play the stage perfectly. No mistakes in the slightest. If you stop boosting at any point, you've lost. And the biggest joke added into the track is actually right at the very beginning, where I swear to Christ, it doesn't matter what speed you take this jump at, or what angle, or if you boost before it, or if you don't boost before it. It is simply pure luck whether or not you will even jump at all and make it across this gap. Then after that, the same applies for the shortcut jump. It sometimes works, and sometimes just doesn't. And even if you do make it, if you don't boost during the shortcut, and hit the time crate on the only chance you have to hit it during the boost you've got to nail these two pixel perfect jumps all over again because you just lost the platinum and need to start again and this isn't even mentioning the extremely cramped track design compared to every other course which loves to make some of the boxes way too difficult to hit with your stiff driving controls anyway by the time I was done with this track I was convinced that my house was for dinner <laughs> this is just delicious does it Park. Jesus, we're nearly there. Onto the Crash Games on GBA now. Look, it's Crash Bandicoot XS. Crash Bandicoot Xylophone Saxophone. <laughs> Uh, Crash XS, or Crash the Huge Adventure in the USA, is a game I hold very fond memories of from when I was a kid, playing it for hours constantly whenever I was on a long car journey or keeping to myself in the living room while my parents watched TV. So it only seems appropriate to ruin those happy memories with this being on equal footing with Crash 4 and Crash Nitro Car as the hardest damn game to get the Platinum Relics on. I mean, my lord. Luckily, most of my gripes with the five hardest stages are applicable across the board. When trying to rush through these levels, the amount of screen that you can see whenever you're required to go higher or lower into a level makes landing on platforms downright guesswork. And despite being mostly the same kind of platforming in terms of handling from the PS1 side scrolling, the sliding and slide jumps are not the most responsive in this game, which will cause you the most deaths out of any other crash game when timing any and all jumps. But that's just how I felt about the whole thing, so what were the worst individual levels? <laughs> Ace of Space. As a general rule, the space levels that in this game space. are the trickiest. For the guesswork on safe platforms to land on, the lack of sound cues when trying to time enemy attacks, and briefly invulnerable hazards. Not to mention some incredibly precise jumps that you have to nail as quick as possible, and with those lovely delayed inputs when it comes to slide jumping. There's nothing particularly stand out about this level compared to the others in the game. It's just a great conglomeration of all the issues the base game has, that are now only a major problem because you're crash dashing through it. However, this doesn't apply to... No fly zone. And the funny thing about no fly zone is that you're flying in it. And the funny thing about no fly zone is that rushing it is basically impossible since it's an auto scroller away from the screen. You can only go as fast as the level lets you, so that must make it easy, right? Just hit all no. of the easy boxes, make sure your health doesn't drop, and the platinum is yours. Well, no! Because this stage is split up by three mini bosses. These blimps. 
and in order to get the platinum you need to make sure that every single shot you take lands on the weak point of these blimps. If more than maybe two or three shots don't land in the entire stage in total, you've lost. And trying to keep that accurate with the GBA D-pad while missiles get in your way, while the blimp does what it shouldn't be able to do and moves quickly, all of this will really end up getting on your tats. It's very hard to take down these three in a row without missing a single hit. But you know, it's possible. So get guard. <laughs> Snow Job is the grossest name for a level I've ever heard, and an absolute nightmare to get the Platinum Relic on for more reasons than the Universal okay, right. ones when it comes to how Crash XS handles. Because now you have to deal with a lot of extremely fast ice physics colliding with the unresponsive slide jumping, and even more displeasingly, a giant, endless, downright cruel section of you needing to run towards the camera on the back of a polar bear while holding the boost button. While the game throws a nuclear assault of insta-kill obstacles and enemies your way that you will not see until it's already too late. The GBA just can't keep up with you, and it's absolutely fine when running at a normal pace, but while boosting, it's practically unplayable. Where am I going? Where will the next time crates be? What's gonna kill me in the next millisecond, and why does it last so agonizingly long? I reckon by the time it takes you just to get by this one section of the level, you could have had a snow job of your own. The final countdown. <laughs> It's the final level of the game, so it's meant to be the hardest. It's in space, and you all know why that's an issue from Ace of Space. That's all I really need to say. Enemies everywhere, you can't see where you're landing, platforms that drop you, nitro crates everywhere, it's a really long level. I've got nothing more to add. It's just unpleasant to get the platinum on. But not as unpleasant for me as... The second grossest name for a level I've ever heard right after Snow Job, Drip Drip Drip, oh, which will either make you think of something very naughty or a bad tribute act to Wet Wet Wet. Getting a platinum in this stage, this dirty dishwater of a stage, was easily one of the least enjoyable things I've ever done in a Crash game. And why it was so unenjoyable was because, as a whole, it's not that difficult. So I felt like a moron every time I restarted. But the amount of restarts, my god, you'd never believe the amount of my restarts. All because of one thing. One seemingly easy and insignificant thing that ended up giving me recurring nightmares for days after getting the relic. The frogs. <laughs> These frogs are the worst enemy in any Crash game, hands down, all of them. Because even if you know they're coming, even if you memorize every location of them, they will kill you if their stomachs so much as look at you a little bit funny. It doesn't even matter if you're spinning while they land on you. Their stomachs are just that hench that Crash can barely stand to touch them. And when rushing from left to right on a screen crunch GBA game, you'll never see them leaping from off camera until you've already been murdered by them. Sometimes jumping in advance doesn't even help because you could jump straight into their stomachs and die that way in midair. Plus, the stage spams them repeatedly throughout the whole runtime. And they're just frogs. They're frogs in a flat and boring sewer stage. It shouldn't be this hard. And it does nothing but make me feel stupid for dying on it so many times. So maybe it's about time I play another game that will surely calm me down. No. And it's on the GBA, which means it has exactly the same control problems as the last game. And excuse me while I banish this game to the depths of my shores. Ugh, this video is too long, man. Crash Entrance is the sequel to Crash XS, also on the Game Boy Advance and surprise surprise comes bundled with exactly the same issues as the previous game when it comes to platinum relics but it also has two new power-ups that work great in the standard game but when put into the time trials cause nothing but problems get a load of this if you hold l and press r you do a super slide an uncontrollably fast slide that will make you slide off more ledges than anything else if you hold l and press jump while standing still you do a super jump a stupidly high jump for sure but one that goes so high that you can't see where you're gonna go can't see where you're gonna land doesn't protect you from whatever's above you and gives you practically no distance. What button do you think you have to hold to do the crash dash? L. So if you're dashing and stopping your tracks for a split second before committing to a jump, if you're still holding the dash button ready to start running again, you'll instead rock it into the air and escape the atmosphere. Yay! <laughs> crash, come back. Oh, wow, this is a great angle. Or, on the other hand, if you need to slide during the Don't dash, you won't do the normal slide. You'll instead do the super slide because you're already holding the dash button to run fast. It's confusing, it's disorientating, and some part of me tells me that the devs realise these flaws because getting the Platinums here as a whole wasn't actually that bad at all. The time limits were really generous, so I think they must have felt a bit guilty. Saying that, there were still some bastard levels, though, so let's dive into them. <laughs> Rocks can roll. Oh my, they certainly can. Rocks can roll indeed. 
right off the edge of the level. I'm going to defend these levels for a second as well. Yes, I like them. Not as much as the Wrath of Cortex ones, but for isometric ball rolling on a GBA, this felt really satisfying to get right. You can even hold A to use it as a break to get more control back. This mechanic in itself makes these stages 10 times more playable and helps out a lot with the time trial since they stop you wonderfully from flying off of the edge if you think you were rolling too fast. What I have a problem with when trying to rush these stages is, well, everything else. Aiming at time crates, moving at a million miles an hour is a pain. Rolling barrels hidden behind the isometric view of a half pipe are a pain. Insta-kill electric gates that don't have a clear pattern on when they turn on or off are a pain. Slightly wonky hit detection is a pain. The occasional slowdown moment is a pain. Whatever way you look at it, this level is a pain. <laughs> Runaway rug is an appropriate name for this level because oopsie, the rug ran away from your feet. You've lost. It's got all the problems with the controls I've already mentioned from the first GBA game, but now with those lovely power-ups activating when you really don't want them to. Next! <laughs> Hop in coffins. We have all the same problems with the first GBA game, but now with those lovely power-ups activating when you really don't want them to. And now with added timed switch doors that cancel out your jump off of them if you don't press them properly, and ice physics. Ice physics with an accidental super slide. Surely that's just asking for a nasty bit of criticism. <laughs> oh look, another Egyptian level. Slip and sliding sphincter. I mean, this just sums up everything without me needing to explain anything else, right? <laughs> the platinum relic for the first level of the game Island intro, I'm convinced was put there for a joke. Yes, the first level really is that difficult. Wanna know why? Just watch. <laughs> Did that run seem pretty seamless, like it couldn't be improved? Well, according to the game, it could, because I just achieved a gold relic time. Yes, to platinum the first level of Crash 2 Entrance, you need to be so perfect that you're literally shaving off microseconds with each attempt you try. The level isn't long, the level isn't hard, but getting that platinum took me more retries than any other level in the entire game. And it makes me feel like Coco's angry monobrow. And finally, it is Crash Nitro Kart on the GBA, which is not a port from the PS2 version because the GBA could not handle that so instead it's completely different tracks and completely different controls than the ps2 version which means that technically i have to get all of the relics on this version of the game as well okay just to be serious for a second i actually can't pick any one of these stages as the hardest because to be completely honest they're all basically the same in terms of challenge and that challenge isn't very high to begin with as great <clears throat> as this game is the tracks are of course limited due to the gba so aside from different cosmetics and a few left to right turns that are different all the races here feel practically the same especially <clears throat> when it comes to relic races because the boxes can't be placed anywhere that created to begin with and shortcuts aren't really a thing in this game all of this considered means that nitro car gba was the easiest game to platinum for me by a long way and picking the five hardest levels just seems somewhat impossible because it's like comparing this flat square and this flat rectangle in the original Mario Kart. Like, aside from extremely minor differences, they're all basically the same track, and whenever something stands out, it's usually extremely mundane. Oh my god, it's a gap! Nothing more to say. This one was a piece of cake to complete on Platinum, and if you haven't tried this game out even regularly, I recommend it. It's really good. Just don't pick a heavy speed character for the Relic Racers because they're a bit lumpy dumpy and love to miss all of the boxes. Oh my god, is that a tight corner? That's it! Two 202 platinum relics in the bag. My crash love quota for this year is completely full. I'm done. No more. Bye, everybody. I'm gonna go and get some fresh air after that. Oh, I can't. The world is still bricks, so I guess I'll just fall asleep right here. Thank you for watching the dumbest and most painful video I ever made. And in case you were wondering about my top five overall hardest relics to get, I'll give you a quick list. Jungle Boogie, Leave Me Alone, Don't Care, Shut Up, I'm Tired, and I'm Never Gonna Do Anything Like This Ever Again. Nurse, give me my sedatives. <laughs> Subscribe and hit that bell. Follow <laughs> that was very interesting. Wait, 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 wait. I know what I'm doing. There we go. Maybe there we go. Um, the poor, poor guy. But like I said, maybe I don't know. Oh. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I woke up really early this morning, so um. Yeah, I want to just get this out the way. And I will say thank you guys for tuning in. One of these days I will actually have an intro. An intro that's not streaming. And maybe an outro. Not anytime soon, but one day. Well, until then, take care, loves. Ta-ta!